Good morning. I thank God finally after several weeks. I'm here again. May God's name be praising Jesus' name. I'm so grateful to God for this. Ah, oh, like when my prayer started on YouTube and I was doing Instagram and other places I have had a mind to come for this podcast, but I kept praying, God, please give me the grace, God, help me, God, fill me with the power of God, and then I'm so excited and grateful to God that he made it possible again. And I want to say Happy New Year. This is our first podcast in the new year. We want to thank God. We were so scared about last year that God please protect us from evils, protect us from dangers, protect us from harms. And that is exactly what God has done. He has kept us alive against the wishes of darkness. He didn't put us to shame. Because they be praised in the name of Jesus. I, I am grateful. I don't know about you, but I am grateful. It's by His grace you are not consumed. Despite all what we went through, He proved Himself faithful. He proved Himself as our God. I want to sing a song. This God is too good. Don't look too fast to see. How good. How good he is. <coughs> Blood of Jesus. <coughs> Blood of Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That's. Ah, Blood of Jesus. That's cold. I'm sorry. So I'm cold is entering my body. But I will still sing. Let me start again. Don't look too far to see how good it is. Just look at me. I'm the apple of his eyes, the toss that fills his heart every morning, noon, and night. Look how it turned my life around, make me a shining light. He's been loved and the redeemed, and I will love you Worship you forever because this God is too good. Amen. Let's end it that way. You see, that is it. Don't always look at challenges like, ah, maybe I shouldn't do it again. Look at it face to face and say, I'm going to start it again. I'm going to do it again. And believe me, if you have that determination, the challenges will always bow to you. And you always come back stronger, better. That cold wanted me to keep quiet. But when I said no, the song came out better. So that's another encouragement. We thank God for encouraging us in all ways. We thank God for everything. I, I, I'm so grateful. I never knew uh, the Lord could turn out this way in this situation. But it did. You know? Though I knew it would always come true, but I didn't know it was this way. I didn't know it was this way. 
Thanks be to him. I always knew he will always come true. You see, that is the confidence when you are a child of God. And when you have you have made you have done the right thing by taking your stand for the Lord, even when it seems unreasonable to take your stand for God and you did it, it will always come true. It will never let you be put to shame. He will never let his people be put to shame. He said he will not allow the wrath of the wicked to fall on the righteous. So that is the reason why God never puts his children to shame. There's always a difference. He said he will, he will put a, a demarcation, a difference between those that serve him and those that are not serving him. So today is another day to encourage ourselves that God is always behind us. He's always before us. He's always with us. He's always in us. May his name be praised in Jesus' name. Yeah, let's pray because that is that has always been our tradition. Every time we come for podcast, we always pray before we start because the words are not my words. They are the words of the Lord. And we need to connect with the Spirit of God so that everything going out, every word of God going out through me can do what God wants it to do so that I don't become a dirty vessel that is messing people's life or in another form I don't become just a noise maker without the power of God that everything I'm saying is doing nothing in people's lives you see there was uh, an illustration a man of God made he said now look at every one of us we all want to be rich we all need a stable income we all need Money, even if you have money, you want more. Then, he said, as an illustration, if it goes to the uh, hospital where people are so sick, very sick, like the world where people are very sick. And then he said, every one of you, I want to pray for you. And he said, by tomorrow, you will, you, will, you will have money in your account. He said, none of them is going to answer because that is not what they need. So what is that trying to say? It is the Spirit of God. Once is is in our speech or is, is speaking through you or tr- speaking through me or any minister of God, once the Word of God is going out, even if the person is sick, is we meet that person at the point of their needs. Even if it's someone who needs financial needs, it will meet that person at the point of their needs. So it's always very, very timely. The word of God going out, it will just be perfect for that situation that person is going through. So that is the essence of my prayers. Now <laughs> you have to say that so that People will understand. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. Please be glorified. Father, Lord, please speak through me as I want to speak your word again. Father, Lord, please clean me in and out so that I don't become a dirty vessel that is giving out dirty things to people. Fill me with the Holy Spirit so that I don't become a sounding cable. Maybe cymbals or cymbals that is all shouting and shouting with nothing. Please help me in the name of Jesus. Father, come and have your way. Take control, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. O Lord, put your words in my mouth. Father, Lord, take all the glory. At the end of this discussion, let us have all glory to to lift your name up. Let us have all reasons to give all glory to your name in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus, for our prayers. And fill me up more and more. And this word, as people will be listening to it, O oh Lord, let it change people's lives. Let it make people want to answer up and do the will of God. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Yes, we thank God. I remember this, the last time we were doing 15 minutes. So now we have used 10 minutes for preamble. Sorry about that. I'm sure from tomorrow we are going to do it better. <laughs> like we are going to go straight to the topics without um, too much preambles. So today's topic, I got it from God since the last time that... I came for podcast, but I didn't know how to go about it. I kept praying, God, put your words in my mouth. And he said, go for the podcast. I will fill your mouth. And he gave me an, an example of how he does that through my Instagram live videos. Yesterday and the day before yesterday. I didn't know what to say, or let me say I went with another thing I wanted to say. And when I got there, the Lord filled my mouth. And I said, what the Holy Spirit wanted me to say? I was surprised. I was shocked. So that was what gave me the confidence to come here. So today we are discussing fig tree. Fig tree is a tree that blossoms. We have the passage in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. It said, though the fig tree may not blossom. Then it went to verse 18. It says, yet I will praise the Lord. Then the verse 19 says, the Lord will perfect all that concerns me. I think, am I right? <laughs> I think that's what is there. Because I, I just read it before coming here. So what, what is it trying to tell us? It's trying to tell us, Yet will I praise the Lord, and I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength, and he will make my feet like his feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. See? What is it trying to say? I know a lot of people might have been following my podcast and many of them say, Why am I glorifying why why am I glorifying being comfortable in hardship? Maybe I'm just thinking that some people will, will say that. Let me assume. Because it came to my mind also at a point. I was like why? Why am I always? Uh, why is my talks? Why is my podcast always like feel comfortable in your in your hard hard life, in your difficult times? Why don't you say things like go and get it, go there and do it anyhow, bo bako pa bo bako bulese like get it at all costs. Even if you have to become a gay as a man, sleep with another fellow man to have the money, do it. Why are you always encouraging people that don't worry, everything will be fine, and making them to stay in their in their poverty state? You know, I thought about it some time ago, and um, the Lord was also there to interpret to me that. It's approved by God. Because today again I'm going to discuss another thing that will make us feel comfortable waiting on the Lord. It's not that um, my discussions or whatever the encouragements are. It's not as if it is making us feel comfortable in poverty. No. Because I looked at my situation too in the past and I'm like, it's all this encouragement that kept me for so long in in that state. Recently and compared to now, I see that 
it was not as if I was being comfortable in an um uh, in a poor state or in a poor life or something. It's just waiting on the Lord. There are times when you take steps when you are not supposed to take it, you can land yourself in in bondage. There's a passage of the Bible that says, For the fear of death, they put themselves in the bondage of death. They were running from death and then they went and put themselves in bondage of death. You are running from shame, you are running from I don't want to um I don't want to be stranded. Oh, I don't have house, I don't know where to stay. I don't know what to eat. Then you went and sinned. If you ask a lot of girls that are doing hookup or or, um, prostitution or whatever, they will tell you, because they don't want to go hungry. My house rent is there. And uh, the beauty about this is that I've passed through these situations, these poor states, this state of not having food, not having house, and I didn't go into messing myself up for money or going to become a boyfriend or girlfriend to a, a man to take care of my needs because I don't want to sleep on the street. I slept on the street ordinarily. Not on the street, street like that. <laughs> Not like I slept on the street like that, but like I never mind what it takes. You know? So what is it trying to say? Well, or what am I trying to say? I, I know what I'm trying to say is still, like, what did she say? I will explain a little. And the least really will interpret the remaining. Is that I'm not, I'm not encouraging us not to, I'm not encouraging us to feel comfortable being poor. No. I'm encouraging us to wait on the Lord. To not outrun the plan of God. Because God will always come true. He will always show himself faithful. He will always come after he has, he has tested us. Even the, uh, Joseph, the Bible says, the Lord, until the Lord tried him, until the word of the Lord tried him, that is when the Lord lifted him up. He went through it. Honorably, the temptation he had with his boss wife. A lot of people are going into such temptation. They are falling into such temptations today because they are thinking they want to save their life. They don't want to be put to shame among their friends. I've had those situations. We are looking at friends doing better, and I'm like, God, when? When are you going to answer me? Also, I've had those situations. Go through the shame honorably. I've had a situation where even uh, people younger than me have insulted me. They have treated me badly because I choose not to sin against God or run ahead of God before he, he does the great things, you see, that he wants to do in my life. Honorably, I passed through it. I I took the insults honorably. I I waited on the Lord honorably. You see? And then it, it came true. And it's coming true. So what is that trying to say? I'm not encouraging us not to not to pray for greatness or feel comfortable in poverty. No, that is not the point. The point is waiting on the Lord. If that option will make you lose the spirit of God. It will make you lose the power of God in your life. It will make you lose the plans of God for your life. Then it's not God's plan for you. God has another plan. It will always come true. People think, ah, what if I miss this opportunity? Maybe I'm going to miss it forever. You won't miss it forever. You will not miss it forever. I'm using my life examples to explain How do I put this in English? Like, practical. Yes, that is the English. I'm using my life examples to make it practical. That it is possible. It is possible to go through it. I remember those days, you know, 
This recently I started some prayers by the grace of God. We thank God you can join our YouTube New Year prayers for doing your life today on YouTube live videos every evening by God's grace. You see, I started praying for greatness and lifting. And one of the prayers that came to my mind was the spirit that that doesn't allow me to be accepted in jobs that will give me good money. Now, why did it have to be those jobs that we just was very small that I was approved of? And then I remembered, and the Lord reminded me and said, those jobs, they didn't approve you. The reason why they didn't approve you was because the Spirit of God in you was not in acceptance with that Spirit. Because I, I noticed it many times, you know, a job that they will ask you to to lie to people and you lie everything on your on your recommendations and everything. You see, it was giving good money and I I decided to do small jobs like small paying jobs that would instead of doing those kind of jobs. And I was like, God, was it a spirit that was stopping me from having that financial freedom then? And God said, no. God's spirit was asking you not to have financial freedom. It's because you are my anointed. And the power of God has not failed in you. The power of God is still in you. So it, it, it couldn't work with them. The power of God cannot mingle with them. It doesn't work with in such environment. That was the reason why they didn't approve of you. That was the reason why they couldn't give you those jobs. You see? So what am I still trying to explain in all these examples, preambles? I'm trying to tell us that God will always come through. Then it looks as if, oh, man, these people are making it. You know, I was thinking about it. Maybe if I had had those financial freedom in those days, maybe I wouldn't have suffered this much. You see? You, you go through those situations be like, what if I had, I had done those things. I wouldn't have gone through all these problems, all these issues, all this chaos, all this um, lack. But yet, they were sinful, and it will, it will, you, you, will, you will almost think there will not be another way again. There will not be another situation where you are able to take care of yourself without having to bow down to the devil. You will think about thoughts like that. Then you, but I'm here to tell you that God will come true. He will make another way that will not allow you to sin against God. God has time. He has specific times. He has specific times. I think there was a passage in the Bible that said, the Joseph stayed long in that prison. After he had stayed long in the, in the, um, in Potiphar's house, as a slave, again, he went to the prison, he stayed long there. And the Lord, the Bible said the Lord was with Joseph. So that is the most important part. If the Lord is with you, he will come true. He has plans. When God brought us to the world, do we know? Was he us that said, God, please, it's time for me to go to. It's not, we are not the ones. When God took us to that house that, that they gave birth to us, it was not us that said, this is the house I wanted to give birth to. Even if there will, there's reason or there is chance for, for children to say that in heaven, we didn't know. We, we, we were so unconscious that we didn't have that plan. But I want to be sure at the same time that it was God who planned it that way. He cares about us. While we were in the womb, we didn't know anything. He cares about us. While we were coming into the world, on the child delivery date, day, we didn't know how it came about. It was all God's plan. So why do you now think he will forget about us now that we even know our left to our right? He won't. He has plans. He knows the acceptable time. He knows the accepted time. He knows the particular time he's going to do that. He's going to, he's going to fix things. He knows that time that we fit us to have that wealth. Look at a lot of young people today. Sorry to use this example. I know it's not really right. 
of youths that are running ahead of God for wealth. Look at how many of them end up. You see? What is that trying to tell us? It's trying to tell us that God still has perfect time. Please let's wait on him. So that is what this fig tree is talking about. Oh my God, finally God has spoken. I was like, God, what is the meaning of fig tree? What is, go and speak about fig tree. You see, the Lord has finally spoken through me. He has finally taken all the glory. Let me read it again. It said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, then the verse 18 says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. What is this saying? It says, I, I will wait on him. He now says in 19, he said, The Lord is my strength, and he will make my feet like his feet, his feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. What is he trying to say? He's saying the Lord will come true. He will come true. He will come true. I'm saying it emphatically that the Lord will come true. How he will do it, you don't know. We don't know. But that he will do it, we know. In the name of Jesus. I want to end it now. And I want to trust that the Lord in his infinite mercy, he will use this word to encourage somebody. No matter what you are going through, hold on to the Lord. It will come true. Make sure any option you are accepting is that option that will make God to remain with you. Don't jump ahead of God. Don't say hey, you want to help God. You can't help God. He has the best plan. May God help us. Let us pray. Father Lord, I'm so grateful. I didn't know the meaning of this topic until I came here and then you started speaking through me. Lord, I return all the glory to you. Thank you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, refill me with all the Spirit and let the word of God that has gone out, let it do what you are sending out to do. Let it heal people. Let it bring people to yourself. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.